I just took a hot shower. And that means that my Frankenstein's laboratory is gonna actually cool off. Taking a look at the current temperature of the Frankenstein lab, it is 85 degrees, which is what it's set for. And it does happen to be turned on from the thermostat. However, what happens when I use hot water is when the water heater recovers, it is gonna cool this room. And we will show you why. My water heater will now be active to recover. And as it's heating up the water tank, it will also be, at the same time, refrigerating the Frankenstein laboratory, even well below the set point when the laboratory thermostat turns off. And we will go show you why that is. Okay, I've been out of the house for a few hours. You can see that the Frankenstein lab is pretty much, looks like it kicked on now, but running at set point. Water heater is not actively heating, so let's see if, what the temperature was like in there while I was gone earlier today. You usually kind of see the droop. There's all the times it's been cycling, but I was earlier this morning, so I'd have to stay right here where it was not, the thermostat was not calling, but the space temperature dropped, the widest space temperature. Um, this is because it cooled because the water heater had demand. So both the water heater and that room have demand to run the compressor so and or it got down it only got down to 81 so it was a pretty quick recovery but it's still overcooled you know four degrees set point being 84 degrees desired and it went down to 81 so and the outdoor temperature only is 87 but don't, don't let that fool you because that room has a heat load from the inverter charger and equipment that is in there but you can see going back that sometimes when the water heater runs a lot uh, it uh, overcools quite a bit. So <laughs> that includes getting down into the 60s, like 65 degrees on the 21st here, which was yesterday, and in the afternoon. So somebody probably used the hot water quite a bit and emptied the tank enough that it ran to bring the space temp, uh, you know, set point 85, it brought it down to 65. And then there's some other droops when you can see when the water heater was running. And these lines up here is when the water heater is not running, but the space temp gets above set point of 85 and it pulses, the, you know, runs the compressor every now and then. So you can see most of the time, it, I haven't been using the room and it doesn't really hardly ever need to turn on via the thermostat to cool the room, except for when it gets a little warmer. And right here, it kicked on a couple times and then it didn't. And then morning shower recovery, that was today. And there, it's been after that for this afternoon, it's been just running normal cycles. You know, it is about 92, it says 94 right there, about 94 degrees outside right now, the green scale right here. So, as the outside temperature's warmed up, the inverter is running, of course, in there. It's just been cycling the compressor. Okay, let's go back here behind the junk to see what we got going on here. So, right now, this device is running because Frankenstein's lab has got up to 86 degrees, set for 85. So people have seen this magnificent beast in the past. Last year, I had actually set this thing up to cool that space, ran that for a while while this unit was heating the water. And then later towards the end of the year, I decided to try to hook it all up just to this unit and the heat rise for the water heater was horrible. I'd even added all these ports back here for the hot gas off the compressor, ran it all the way up here into my heat exchanger. But it just, the heat curve, too slow, plus I had the, the water heater in series with like the bottom two circuits of that coil, just little 10,000 to 12,000 V2 compressors I was using just would not work. So, and it was getting cold in the winter, so at that point I just put the compressor back up in this unit and hooked it up the way it was the previous year, year and a half, whatever it had been, and it's been working pretty good. But then now summer arrived, you're in the Phoenix area, you know, by April, it's getting hot. So you guys gotta check this out, man. So I kind of reinvented the wheel again. <laughs> this is a, a manifold port I put on, and what I thought of doing this time was 
let me back up for people who haven't seen this before, but that's a rotary compressor. Hot gas goes into a heat exchanger here, which is hooked up to a recirculating pump. So it turns on a recirculator pump when it's heating the water tank, 50 gallons. This condenser coil, quote unquote, it was anyway for a wine cooler. I had taken this thing and just repiped this into an evaporator coil, two circuits with capillary tube, it worked perfect. Uh, in the winter, it does frost sometimes, no defrost, so I have to sometimes turn it off and let it thaw. Sometimes I turn on the heating element if we get a couple, you know, 30 degree mornings. <laughs> Other than that, it works perfect, summer, winter. Um, but anyway, the high wall that's in there, in my, I kind of went ahead and took it off of this thing, which I wasn't even using, and I needed cooling again, so I wanted to hook it up to this. So I was going to disconnect this evaporator and hook that one up in its place for the summer, and I got thinking, well, what the f***? It's just, uh, let me make it so, you know, I can switch it. Plus, I added some shutoff valves for doing service. So, I added these ports here. I've got the quarter. And, well, it looks like 5 eighths here, but it's really 3 eighths after it comes out. And then I got another one. So, right now, this circuit here, which is turned off, is this coil. And I actually started it up on that coil and fine-tuned the charge, and it worked okay. And I closed these ports, opening this one to go to the high wall. And another little thing to do is this is the second time I've used an online capillary tube calculator. Uh, punched in all the data. Um, I think I did have it open on my phone at one point. Yeah, here it is. Capillary tube. So for 0.040 inches, 40 thousandths, 45 degree evaporator. You put in all the stuff, kind of some links for your heat exchanger length and I varied some of these numbers and they don't even change the output very often but 25 26 inches is what I got for 5,000 BTUs the reason I ran that at 5,000 BTUs is because I do two of these in parallel did the same thing when I made this one to each circuit but in this case I just wanted to do two you know decent length of capillary tube in parallel so it comes out of the quarter inch, goes through this, and then back into the quarter inch and feeds the high wall. And guess what? The superheat and everything was fine. It actually worked. I dialed it in on this coil, shut it down, opened that one, and it's still dialed in. And like when I put my hand on here, it's nice, good, cool line. It's not flooding. It doesn't have a lot of superheat. It's just about right. So that's it. Everything's kind of hidden under a bunch of insulation, but that's what it's doing. So this fan is unplugged. I just have it, the wire cut. I need to put a male female spade and so next winter comes and i don't need to cool that room anymore what i'll do is just shut it off close these isolation valves open these ones again and connect this little wire here for this fan to run and then it'll be back on the outside coil if i really want to get fancy i could put you know some uh, uh liquid line solenoid valves in there and have a controller switch between the two so what's happening right now as you've seen before I showed you on the screen is that it does overcool the space sometimes when uh, the water heater runs a lot but now that it's summertime it, it's not so cold it freezes me out and all I have to do is just open that door to the garage and I use that room if it just went down a degree and uh, it's fine but and right now the way it's hooked up is that either the water tanks thermostat could bring this on turns on the you know the circulator pump and it starts heating or the thermostat on the wall set for 85 degrees could do that and the reason i kind of set it for 85 is that way it's not um, running when it doesn't need to it just keeps the room just just in case the water heater doesn't run for a while it keeps the room from going over 85 and then what i figure i could do is when i want to use the room for working on my electronics or something in there is i'll just uh turn on the water heater kind of go in there explain that so of course in the laboratory and there's the eco bee three of them in the house and the one is in here so it's 85 so that could turn on the unit if it gets above 85 this will turn on the unit if it gets below about 125 i think it goes down 124 is where i have the differential heats up to 130 and shuts off right now this thermostat is off but the compressor and the circulator pump is on so this is hot as a dickens here and the pipe feels pretty warm down there so my water heater is actually still pretty full and it's cycling this pump speed between low and high kind of 
as the liquid line temp get, hits about 110, I have it to speed up to high. If it's below that, I have it run slow. That way it gets me a, enough heat rise. So it doesn't just take, like, especially when the water heater is being used, you'll get your tap water temperature, which could be 70, could be as cold as like 50 in the winter, right? It's going right to the bottom with the dip tube. And then if you put the pump on full speed, you don't get a lot of heat rise, especially when it first starts. Well, then it goes right through and mixes in the top where it's taking the, the hottest water out. So it really like attenuates the temperature, you know? Also, if it goes very fast and it's in the winter, it like takes a longer for the uh, pressures to build up and it to become efficient and everything. So I kind of, when I did this, this last winter, this mod to two speed this pump, it kind of cured that. So it actually doesn't run at all until that temperature gets up to 100 on my liquid line temperature and then it goes to low speed. And if it gets up to like 110, it goes to high. So actually works really well. And you can just hear it going between low and high right now. And it's, you know, this water always comes out about 130 or so before it even goes into the tank. And the sensor's pushed in over here behind the insulation. So it's been working pretty good. Oh, and the thermostat, see it's only set for 85, so it just shut off. See, well, let's see if this updates. Wait for a second, because this uh, app's a little slow. Looks like my upstairs unit's on, downstairs off. That will update doesn't really have like a refresh but this app isn't 100 percent real time it just updates every so many seconds or so but trust me that's off because that just went off so we'll check it again in a second but that's it so right now it's kind of warm in this room so when i want to use the room what i what i expect to do is just come in here and just crank this down and turn it on and it, it will it cools it's not real fast because it's only 10,000 btus but it does cool down. I mean, it cools down probably faster than your AC does in your house. And it definitely will overcool because I've been getting like down into the slow 60s a couple times when that water heater runs in the morning. And there's a heat load in this room all times just because of the battery charger. Especially about 9 o'clock now the sun's coming up. This thing's already starting to ramp up. And like come about 10, 11 o'clock, this thing's really putting the juice in all these lithium batteries up there, which are topped off about 56 volts so and probably just running a couple hundred watts right now yeah 220 the light uh this sounds like this compressor might be on it is so it's pulling about 100 watts for this 100 for the lights it always goes down about 100 watts whenever i turn off the light do 130 watts would be like 20 or so for all the parasitic parasitic stuff over here but uh uh, that compressor's put in pump have been running 700 watts and as high as 800 watts when it's really hot and so that's the other thing i was going to get to is uh so like last week and look that updated it's off um when i cranked this down and ran it for a while i figured that eh, it'll take a while to overheat the water heater well what it did was it added extra heat this temperature never went above 132 but what it did was it was running long enough after this was already peaked out that it filled the whole bottom up with hot water to where the leaving this water leaving here like right now it's like it was a little over 100 you know when it was running because you get a gradient in there from top to bottom well it the gradient was pretty much gone and it was like 130 going right to that heat exchanger and my head pressure shot up and the capillary tubes do what they do and they slow down the metering because you get more hot gas mixed in with the liquid slows down your feed and actually my split temp went to hell and uh it just you know like what you see little low temp units do they uh, just diminish in cooling until they just hardly work and it wasn't cooling very well so i turned it off so it's working great except for i need to go out there and hook up uh, another sh little bit of a heat exchanger or something let me go back out there yeah losing light here my uh, three-phase compressor right there is running on low speed, 40 hertz. This one's off now, but what I've got some old coil here. I know this looks real ugly, but I need to clean it up, but I've saved it for things like this. I was thinking of just, uh, I don't know, repurposing this somehow, making a mount, putting it maybe like right here. And then I think I'm gonna take this 3 8 hot gas line. Actually, it's, take that back. This is liquid line. It's 
hot gas line comes out, goes through the heat exchanger, comes out right into this line, and I just have these two lines going up to the, my isolation valves, which it uses one at a time, depending on the season. So I need to come in here and take the tube and run it through this aluminum coil, I think, over here, and then back, which shouldn't add too much volume. I don't want to add too much because, like again, it's going to kill the way this thing's real efficient with building up that thermal you know the pressure and temperature into the water heat exchanger and I want it to do to be, like I did when I added that but you can just kind of see this you know I think which is a double row even though I even used half of it two circuits when I put it in series after the heat exchanger it just killed the performance of heating the water so I don't want to do that but this is way less volume than it was when I added those and those are 3 8 lines so I don't think it's going to be a problem and what I want to do, and I clean, like I said, clean it up and mount it up here somehow, is uh, I think I want to add it, keep it in the series, and then just put a little thermostat uh, sensor on the liquid line leaving to where when it gets kind of warm, it'll switch on this fan. This would be when the water uh, tank is kind of at its peak maximum, and I want to continue to run the unit to cool the room. Yeah, it'll start with that 130 degree water and then kind of have some of this and I think it'll bring the temperature down Enough within reason. We'll see. It's a pretty small system. It doesn't hold all that much refrigerant And so, you know This will I think this will probably do the trick And then the kind of cool thing is when I go I think when I go to um in the winter time, you know, it's kind of always gets kind of cold and like I said, it kind of freezes up, but you know, you get a little bit of probably waste heat, you know, after the heat exchanger only rejects so much in the water heater that I think the one more pass through this will kind of uh, capture some of that and kind of, it'll draw it into the coil. <laughs> I don't know, kind of the opposite of a sub cooler will be whatever the other thing is you're doing is you're you know, getting the waste heat, and uh, we'll see. This is another one of those trial and error things that I do, and it's an idea at this moment, and then it might turn out to be total shite, or it might be like me just doing this off the cuff, capillary tubes, hooking it all up, and it just works freaking perfect when it's within, you know, reasonable operating temps. So, it's perfect right now. The only thing is it just isn't working if the water heater's completely filled with hot water and I want to cool the room. I just can't at this moment. So, got to do, got to try something. So, we'll do that. <laughs> the only other thing I thought of trying was putting a little tiny heat exchanger in and pumping just a little bit of water through it like you do on a water-cooled ice machine or something. Put a little regulator. But that's a lot of extra work. Putting some expense I don't want to. And all, the whole point of this is using mostly used... Uh, materials, you know, to do this off-grid, low-buck stuff. So, and again, for people who don't know, this unit runs off-grid on its own solar and batteries. And heats that 50-gallon tank and cools this room now. So, And once I put this on, I'll be able to actually put the thermostat down to a reasonable temperature. And because uh, I have the, the, the energy left to do that, you should be able to totally cool that room down to 80 degrees max all the time. And run it down to 70 when I'm using the room. That's the idea. And not use any utility power doing it. So I do I do need to eventually make a true doghouse cover for this, but yeah, this works for now. So anyway, I wanted to make an update video. I didn't really, I made a couple clips, but never really uploaded it of the recent modification here, but thought I'd kind of show you guys kind of where I'm at with it. I'm still just kind of Frankensteining it, experimenting, <laughs> seeing how it works. It's kind of fun. Sometimes a pain in the ass. Anyway, let you guys know how it goes.